Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a hack of this TJ Maxx bunny cushion and a whole lot more. So we took a cover off of a cushion that we had and we're going to use that as our template. It measured 16 by 16 and we're just going to take this yardstick and we're going to allow about an inch or half an inch for a seam allowance on the outside and just use a pencil and cut out that as your template. We appreciate your support. Please hit the like and subscribe button. It is free and it does help our channel a lot. The material that we're using for the cushion cover is a linen drop cloth that you can get at your local Home Depot. So the piece that we're cutting out here is the front of the cushion and we'll be using that as the template to form the back of the cushion which will be a double fold. Then for the back of the cushion we're going to be making two other cuts and we'll be using the original as the template and the two that you'll cut will be the same length but about four or five inches narrower. So the idea of that is to have that, there'll be an overlap and that's our fold part. So now you'll put some hot glue on the edge of one and we're going to be making seams on both sides of this. So you put your hot glue on there, fold it over and just sort of start in the middle and spread that out. Make sure the glue is on there really well. Then do the same on the other side and this is to make a space in the back so we can take our cushion out. Then you take those two back pieces and glue them on three sides on the back of the front piece. Uh, just don't glue the center because that's the space we'll need to remove the cushion later. And as you can see here, Pebble stole my chair. Here's our cushion all glued together. Now we'll just turn it right side out. And so here's why we have the overlap. So we have a nice little opening where we can put the cushion in and take it out for washing. And to make our bunny applique, we're going to use this mat that we got at Value Village. I think it's a mat. I'm not really sure. But anyways, it does have a nice pattern. And we're going to use this wooden bunny that we got at Dollar Tree as our template. Then you'll just take your mat and flip it over to the back side. Take your template and a marker and just do a simple outline of the bunny. You don't want to really be including all the little tail details or the space in between the legs. It just makes it harder to cut and harder to finish. So you just want to keep it as a nice simple silhouette. There, and that's our little cutout. I noticed some of the corners were a little bit bulky. So what you do is you go inside, take that corner out, cut off any excess material, but don't cut through the glued part. And that will give us a nice sharp little corner without bulk. Then we'll take, flip it over to the front. We'll take our bunny, sort of center that on there. And when you're satisfied where it's at, just start to hot glue it a little bit at a time. Because if you try to glue the whole thing down, you might take it off center. Or the glue will cool down before you get a chance to lay it all down. So just do it piece by piece. As you can see here, we're taking our old template, and I'll just show you why. There we go. See, that would have been way too complex to cut all that stuff out. Just doing it simple makes it nice and easy. And to outline our bunny, I'm going to be using some nautical rope that I got on Amazon. And it comes with knotted ends, so you'll want to take the knot out. Take some hot glue, put it on the ends there so it doesn't fray on you. And once you get that done, just be careful here too. It does get pretty hot. And then just clip off any excess. And you'll just take that end and glue it in between the ears and start gluing around the bunny. Just find that this nautical rope gives the rabbit a really nice finish. The cushion on TJ Maxx cost about $30. And we did this for about $3 or $4. So that's quite a good savings. $26, $27. And that turned out pretty cute, don't you think? Now we'll take this cushion insert that we got off of Amazon and we'll stuff that into our cover. There, isn't that beautiful? Eh, so cute. And we got these three little egg holders at an antique store. A little bunny with a big flower egg holder. A little bunny, isn't he sweet? And another little chick. And we're going to be doing some crafts with these three that will absolutely amaze you. And you could use any egg holder you have at home. So we're going to start with the chick and we'll just place a nice little floral arrangement inside. And ta-da! 
there we go. Wasn't that easy? <laughs> but very pretty. And this adorable little bunny that we got was mislabeled as a gum holder. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't keep my gum that long, and I sure don't put it in a little glass bowl. And for this one, we're going to be painting a Dollar Tree egg with some Walmart chalk paint, and we're going to be using it as an egg holder. And to glam up our little egg, we're going to be using some of these pearls that we got at our local dollar store. They do have an adhesive on the back, so they're nice and easy to use. Just cover the little hole at the bottom, go along the seam on the side, so you get a nice straight line. And there will be a little bit of space, so just sort of measure that out and cut out how many pearls you'll need to fill that space. Then to finish glamming up our egg, I'm going to use these fancy little rhinestones, and I'm going to stick that on the center of the egg. This is a very easy way to decorate eggs, and isn't that just adorable? So sweet. And this next craft is quite easy as well. We'll take our little bunny with the big flower. We'll put some moss inside there. Just cut some out, place it inside. Now, most of the ones on this video will be quite simple. Just some nice, easy and quick Easter decor for you. Once we have the moss in there, we'll be putting a couple of these little chicks in there. You can get those at your local dollar store as well. And finish that off, put that in there. And look at that. Isn't that just sweet, sweet, sweet? <laughs> so we've just taken these three antique finds and turned them into some sweet little Easter decor. And for our next project, we're going to be using this duck that we found at the antique store. I'm not sure if it was used for flowers originally or not, but it sure is cute though. To start this project, we're going to be cutting off this old tattered ribbon that was on there and be putting on a new one. And once our ribbon is on, we're going to be taking some floral foam and we'll hot glue that inside. We'll take some pink and purple little flower segments and we'll put that into the foam. So just use some nice little uh, spring flowers that you might have around, some little mini ones. And for us, we got these uh, Lily of the Valley, these white ones that we got off of Amazon. They give a really nice finish because of the height. Give it some nice height there. Isn't that beautiful? And for this project, we're going to be using some brown felt that we got at Dollar Tree and a raised cake stand. And we're just going to cut some of that felt off on top of our little cake holder here. Then we'll flip that over so we can get a rough idea of how much felt and how round it's got to be. So just use your tray as a template and cut off any excess around the little cake holder here. Once you have your rough piece cut out, you'll just Check there, and if it's not, just fold it in half a couple times to make this cone. Cut off any excess, and take it apart, check it again, and just keep doing that until you get the right size that you need. Once that's the size, you'll take your bunnies, put a little mama bunny in the middle, two little baby bunnies on each side. Very nice little formation there. Then we'll take some of these styrofoam carrots, and we'll put a little carrot garden in front of them. So just snip the ends off your carrots, use a pair of scissors, put some hot glue on there, and just glue them onto your felt in front of the bunnies. Now in this case you might want to use a knife too. I found that using the scissors sort of left a pretty rough edge, and I think a knife might give you a smoother edge. And like I say, we'll just hot glue those on into a couple rows here. So then you'll make about two rows of these carrots, make a nice little garden. We'll put a full carrot in front of the baby bunny. Then to finish it up and naturalize it, we're going to take some moss and just put that around the perimeter of the bunnies in the garden. That turned out pretty nice. What do you think? Now for this project, you might recognize this sugar bowl from some of our other crafts. They're just so versatile, and I think everybody should have a silver sugar bowl in their collection for decorating. For this one, we're just going to put some moss inside there and a little bird on top. Then once you have that in place, we'll just take some tiny little spring florals and place them inside the moss around the bird. And for this, you just need to use some small scale baby's breath and florals. Now that was easy. And we thrifted this at Value Village for about $4. 
And it reminded me of those cement geese that people used to decorate in their front yards. Do you remember that? They used to decorate them for the holidays. So we sprayed our goose with some clear coat to seal it. Then I'm going to paint it with some of this Walmart chalk paint. Because of all the fine detail in this goose, it took about three coats of paint to cover everything up. Now for the second coat. Then just to speed it up a bit, I used a heater to dry the paint in between coats. Or you could use a hair dryer too, that would work just fine. And just to glam up my goose, I'm going to be putting some gold paint on her. So we'll start by doing the beak first. And it'll take about two coats to get a good coverage. Then I'll do a couple dots for the eyes. Then I'll give her some golden feet. As I was doing this goose, I was really, really impressed with the uh, amount of detail and workmanship that was put into this. There's so much detail in the feet and in the feathers. Just an amazing little piece. Now I'll give it a second coat just to smooth out any rough areas and give it a nice finish. Every goose needs a golden egg, so I'm going to paint a Dollar Tree egg gold. And we put a base coat of chalk paint on this first, and then we put the gold over top. So Mother Goose here needs a nest, and that's just what we'll do. We'll get a little basket, and we'll fill that with some moss. Just put that around the perimeter. And I just have some pre-painted eggs that I've done already, and I'm just going to place those around on the moss. There, just a golden egg, and a few others. So her little goose started out looking pretty rustic, but now she looks pretty refined. Isn't that pretty? Then we thrifted this little bird and a tree here, a little candlestick holder. Another really amazing piece. So I thought I'd start off by trying to paint all the leaves and the bird white, but that didn't look so good. So I'm going to paint the whole thing white now. And this piece will take about three coats as well. There's sure a lot of detail and nooks and crannies in here to get covered up. Now I'm going to paint the beak gold. Then I'm going to add some gold eyes. Then I'm going to gently dry brush some gold just on the tips of the flowers and leaves. Now we're going to try and decorate this a couple different ways. First, we'll use a real candle. There we go. Ta-da! Then we'll try this wonderful little nest with some eggs in it. Put that on top. Then I tried a couple glam eggs just for kicks. Which ones do you like better? Thanks for joining me today and for crafting alongside of me. I'm going to show you a little review of all the crafts that we did in this video. Just leave your comments below as to which one you like better. Once again, thanks for coming out and watching and we'll see you soon.